crush on you, yo. Um, I seen an interview from Cameron. He did an interview with Drink Champs, and he said that he, he actually wrote your verse for that song. How did that come about, yo? Um, well, in the beginning, I don't even, to this day, I didn't hear no vocals from Cameron. But I heard Cameron explain it on Drink Champs that uh, Mace was, you know, because uh, Mace was actually helping Big do my album. You know, I had an album that Big wanted to work on, and he was going to get some writers to help him write, because I wasn't a writer at that time, you know. I was just like, a, uh, I was an idea of something he was want, he wanted to try, you know what I mean? For me performing with him all the time and being on the road with him before Junior Mafia came out, I was getting my feet wet with the business, and he used to be like, you know what? You know how to perform. You've been around it. I'm going to write you some songs, because I, I, I want to work on something. I think it'll work. And um, he wanted some help, so he was, you know, like all of kind of like label mates from Bad Boy, he knew all had bars. So he was like, you know what, I'm going to get Mace to help me, and I'm going to get Kiss to help me, and a few of the locks to help me put your project project together. So I always thought the song came from Mace, but when Cameron explained it, he said he did the verse, and Mace kind of referenced it for me. So I never, I was always confused, to be like, well, I never heard a Cameron reference to that verse. You know what I'm saying? But it came from that, it came from that camp. You know what I mean? So uh, that's kind of like how that came about, and Big was trying to, Sign Cam at one point, you know, Big was like getting his label going with us, with Kim as a solo artist and Junior Mafia, so he was trying to look for artists as well, so that's kind of like how Cameron came in the picture with us as well. The Hot 97 incident where Biggie called up to the radio station with Funk Flex and he said that um, Tupac and Snoop and Doll Pound was shooting a music video, and um, I think Snoop and Doll Pound trailer end up getting shot up, what exactly happened with that incident? Nothing really. That ain't even nothing. That wasn't even nothing on us. That was just some. That was some Brooklyn shit, you know. Like everybody was kind of, I guess, hearing about them shooting these videos, and they was hearing about them knocking down buildings and shit like that. That just that was just like a natural thing of just being from the borough. That was nothing on us, even to this day. You know what I mean? Like I know a lot of people had speculation thinking that was us, but that had that didn't come from our camp or our crew at all. That was just people that knowing that they were shooting a video there and they felt like it was like this in New York. And that was just New York people just like, you know, taking in on their own decisions, their own situations. You know what I mean? That didn't come from my crew or Biggie crew at all. Right. But Biggie, he did get on the radio and make them comments though, right? Because Snoop, he even said he heard it. I don't even remember that. I don't, I don't even remember him getting on the radio speaking on it. But even if he did, it wasn't, he didn't make no action towards it, but I don't even remember that. I heard, I heard this story more than once, right. more than twice. So I'm like, I don't recall Big calling that radio station. And they should be able to find it or be able to Google that motherfucker. It should pop up, but I ain't never hear it. Right. Yeah, man. So um, they felt the type of way, New York, they felt the type of way about um the whole New York, New York video then. Of course, of course. Yeah, you know, they, I mean, you know, and the way, you know, the way you hear... You know, I mean, these are my brothers to this day right now. Dads, corrupt, Snoop, you know what I mean? Um, so if you ever hear them talk, they said they wasn't dissing New York. They, they, they were up doing it. It wasn't trying to degrade the city, but the city took it that way. You know, just some people, you know what I mean? You see, when you turned around, Capone Noriega did L.A., L.A. You know what I'm saying? Like, remember, we didn't make no response record to that or nothing. You know what I mean? It wasn't nothing like that. But obviously, I let you know how the city felt when somebody, another group turned around and did the same rendition of the song talking about LA, you know what I mean? So yeah, I just let you know kind of like how the city was feeling. And Capone and Noriega wasn't even from Brooklyn, they from Queens, so they was doing that on the strength of just like a, a New York thing. Like, uh, we felt like y'all was coming at New York, so we gonna come back at y'all. They kind of like made their own decision, their own move. Yeah, man, I remember Corrupt saying that, man. I remember him saying that um, they didn't mean any disrespect by doing what they did. But um, Biggie, what was his perception of Snoop before the whole East Coast, West Coast beef? Because Biggie, he was a fan of Snoop before the issues, right? It was love. We didn't have no perception. You know, even when the whole East Coast and West Coast beef was actually going on, we didn't look at Snoop in them anyway. You know what I mean? Because they always kept it cordial, kept it peace. But if that's your crew, we expect them to ride with their crew. You know what I'm saying? Like, I expect him to be on death row side if there's any confrontation between death row and us. And it's vice versa here, too. You know what I mean? You know, it ain't no issues, but I'm riding with Big point blank period type of thing but it wasn't nothing with Snoop and, and the dog pound we always kept a cool rapport and relationship with them and, and and as the years went on we grew up we grew even tighter with them you know what I mean so it wasn't never really no bad blood ever between like you know Snoop and the dog pound at all